Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. While I'm waiting on finishing up that boom arm for the MIG welder wire feeder, this week I'm going to try to sell you a TIG finger. No, no need in beating around the bush, that's what I'm trying to do. But I do know that in order to ask for something, I need to give something. So I'm going to try to give some good tips today. And we're going to talk a little bit about walking the cup versus not walking the cup. Now you see those little scratches on there. This is a chunk of stainless steel. And a ceramic cup will put scratches on parts. Not every industry will tolerate that. Some will fire you. So when you walk the cup and not worry about scratches, walk the cup. It's a really good technique. It really provides a lot of even uh, ripple pattern because you're moving that torch at really consistent increments and that's what puts nice even ripples in in a bead is the torch pattern and how you dip the rod now I'm laying the wire in the puddle on this thing I never dip the rod in and out of the puddle that's another technique another area where lay wire technique comes in handy is on an open butt root pass like this that's about a 1 8 gap I'm using a 1 8 rod and I'm just slightly wiggling the wiggling the torch here because I don't want much side to side motion on that torch I want, the, I want the arc force of that tip of that electrode to kind of punch that puddle and, and uh, push the root through the back side. And if I go really wide with it, it kind of distributes the heat too much and fans out and doesn't do what I want it to do. So just a little wiggle to keep the torch moving. Lay wire, keep the wire in the puddle. You don't have to dip it in and out. The never keyhole it makes a really nice, smooth root pass if you know what you're doing if you've practiced this and feel comfortable at it and can watch the puddle and have the heat set right and you know have your gap set right your land set right the bevel angle set right it, but all, all of it makes a difference but it really it really can work really well now this is that same joint just running a second pass over top of that root pass doing the same thing leaving the wire in the puddle keeping a nice tight arc wiggling that cup inside that groove and see how it nice makes just makes really nice increments it moves the torch ahead at the same interval each time and that's what makes it uniform now what you're seeing here is I'm not walking the cup I'm just free handing and I'm not leaving the wire in the puddle I'm dipping it in and out because I'm, I'm doing what's called a dip and a keyhole technique I'm each time I pull the rod out I'm able to see the uh, sharp edges of that bevel to kind of make sure then I'm breaking them down. Well now I'm preparing to uh, walk the cup over top of that root pass that I freehanded. You don't have to stick with one method. You can swap up whatever works the best. Feel like you can walk the cup better on the second pass but you can't do it on the root. You just do what you gotta do. And also sometimes left-handed it's hard to walk the cup for some people so they want, might want to walk the cup right-handed and freehand left-handed. It doesn't really matter. Here I'm, I'm doing a little freehand left-handed little close-up arc shot of that and see it's working out pretty well for me. On little small things like this, that's only about a half inch diameter. It's tough to walk the cup without that cup just slipping off. Especially this thing's got that split groove machined out in it. So this is a, this is a time when you maybe would not want to walk the cup. Maybe it doesn't work out real well for you to lay the wire in something like this. Maybe you just want to dip it. So you can kind of see each time you dip the rod in and out of the puddle what's going on. A little dip, dip, and then you can watch the front of the puddle and make sure that you're, you're uh, fusing, penetrating in like you need to be. Lots of different techniques work. Now, for aluminum joints like this if you're training in school and everything is a lap joint that aluminum gets hot and it gets hot quick so that's where that's where a TIG finger really comes in handy because it is very slick and very heat resistant and lets you slide up a joint like this make nice even movements outside corner joint same thing I put I've got it on my pinky here torch upside down just sliding up nice and nice and smooth works out real well Otherwise, you need to make a big wad of duct tape or a big block of wood or something to prop on. But when you got a TIG finger, you got a prop in your pocket all the time. You can just pull it out of your pocket and you prop it right next to the weld. Put it back in your pocket when you don't need it. For chromoly tubing and, and uh, DOM steel tubing like this, little joints where you need to prop up really close to the weld, 
comes in really handy especially for aircraft fuselages made out of chromoly tubing here I'm doing some thin chromoly tubing at 33 pulses a second 33 percent on time 33 percent background it comes in really handy for if there's slight gaps or if the tubing's really thin makes a big difference if there is no gap and you know and you're welding something maybe a sixteenth thick you don't need pulse usually and uh, just do a straight current also for stick welding for a 6G test this is how I prop it's kinda tough making it around that two inch uh, pipe really quickly so I prop with my pinky using that kinda angle right there let me stop for a minute here and talk about the CK Worldwide FlexLock 360 TIG torch. It's kind of a funky looking little torch here with a swivel head, but man, it has become my go-to torch because I can get any angle that I need. It's just so versatile. It's a, it's kind of a 17 style air cooled with a really flexible uh, whip on it, and that red thing is actually a valve, a torch valve that uh, you can use if you're using a dry rig where you don't have a solenoid in your machine. Uh, I happen to be using this with a, a uh, a Dynasty 200 where I've got a solenoid in the machine so just leave it on all the time but the, the flex head gets all kinds of angles that you just really can't get with most torches like for instance if I if I don't if I don't know how to walk the cup and I need to freehand this this joint right here and I want to use this angle I can get that angle not a problem or if I want to prop a different way possibly coming in from the top so I can make a, a nice long run without stopping you can see that's possible too. I switched the torch, the torch head to this this kind of angle. So, I have found that this is this torch is pretty awesome, and it's I've also got that little small head on it. So I'm using the small hardware that I have a bunch of in my box, a bunch of small gas lenses and everything. So that's nice. So again, I'm coming at it from a whole different angle right here. I'm freehanding, sliding the TIG finger around. And right now, because this is such a heavy piece, I'm going to probably about 130 to 140 amps. I'll speed it up a little bit here just to make things interesting. But that's, the, that's a run with a free handing. And now I'm going to come from a different angle, like I showed just a minute ago. Propping and coming in it from the top. Going nice and easy, nice and slow. Multi-pass weld here. This is actually not even welding two pieces together. I just found a chunk of nice polished stainless steel off a shaft that we had shortened. And I thought it'd be uh, interesting to run a multi-pass TIG weld in here. So I stacked a whole bunch of beads in there, freehanding and walking the cup. All right. Well, I hope you got something out of this today. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can click the little blue link in the description box below and we'll take you to a page that looks like this where you can order TIG fingers. I appreciate you watching and go visit welding-tv.com and weldingtipsandtricks.com.